Hello and welcome to the first video in the series on World War I. This is video one, the causes, the persons, and the events of World War I. It's a lot, all in the same video. But here's the big picture. In World War I, which went from 1914 to 1918, uh, it was caused by competition among industrial nations in Europe and a failure of diplomacy. But there's actually a lot of causes. So in these notes, you'll see connections back to the Industrial Revolution, um, the Congress of Vienna, nationalism, the unification of Germany and Italy, the Franco-Prussian War, and imperialism, because all that stuff that we've studied now comes in and helps set up the causes for World War I. So we're going to look at it in terms of images. Instead of just writing notes down, you're going to be describing these images as I help you through that process. As you can see right here, this is a, a description of nationalism. And uh, this depiction of nationalism shows one guy out in front with a big old flag and a little flag underneath. He says, follow. And then all these people are just sort of goose-stepping behind him, walking behind him blindly. I think those are blindfolds on, so they're just blindly following him. So nationalism is... Good, it's pride in your country, but it can also cause you to follow a leader blindly, and that's dangerous and helps start World War I. Um, there are also diplomatic failures, and in this case, I'm showing this image, which uh, represents all these different countries who were involved, um, and shows it as a game, as though this sort of alliance system that we'll see in a second and all of the agreements between countries and the diplomacy was really uh, not taken seriously enough that it might actually lead to a horrible war. Imperial competition is the next cause, and you can see in this image here, all these different representations of European countries are pulling, literally pulling on a big map of Africa as they attempt to set up colonies in these areas. And it's a, it's a fair representation, except that Great Britain actually had colonies all up and down this side. Um, but you see Italy and Germany and Great Britain and Holland and Belgium and France and Spain are all trying to get colonies. And because they're all trying to get the same space, you can actually see the British and the Dutch down here. Um, pulling on the same areas. It caused a lot of conflict and a lot of uh, friction between countries. Another cause over here is militarism. Uh, and that's when you idealize military conflict and combat as a way, especially of becoming a man. So you are a boy and then you go to war and you come back a man and you're stronger and you've you've been in great battles and look how glorious it looks. So this depicts militarism because this painting shows uh, how people viewed war as this glorious thing that's a French flag. So these are French uh, cavalrymen charging. Um, so when you view war as glorious, as this painting shows, then you're more likely to think, oh yeah, war, let's just go to war. That'll solve that problem. And here's a huge cause. There were two major alliances in Europe. And an alliance is when you agree to protect the people that you have an alliance with. Uh, if someone goes to war with them, then they're now at war with you. And in this case, England, France, and Russia were on one side, and Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy were on another side. And that sounds simple, but it gets more complicated, and here's why. Because Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Germany, yes, they're all in an alliance together, but they're balanced out by Russia, France, and Great Britain. Um, and the Ottoman Empire also gets pulled into this alliance. But the problem is that this big alliance of super powerful countries is connected to Bulgaria, allied with Bulgaria, an aid treaty. And then Russia, France, and Great Britain have an aid treaty with Serbia. And uh, Bulgaria and Serbia over here in the Balkan Peninsula, that has been a, an area with a lot of conflict in it leading up to this time period. And in fact... Um, the Austro-Hungarian heir, remember they're part of the Triple Alliance over here, was assassinated by a Serbian nationalist. As you can see, this is an actual poll from a newspaper, and this is a, a depiction of that event, where this Gavrilo Princep, this guy, is assassinating the Archduke. But Serbia, there's Austria-Hungary, so now all of a sudden Austria-Hungary is going to war with Serbia, which pulls in Russia, which pulls in... Uh, Germany to help Austria-Hungary, which pulls in Italy, which pulls in France, Britain, and all of a sudden, poof, all of Europe fighting one another. So the United States also enters the war during this, uh, during this time, well, in 1917, almost at the end of the war. And here are the reasons. Uh, Germans uh, used submarines, and they were just sinking ships left and right, uh, regardless of whether they were supposedly civilian ships or not. And also, Germany offered through the Zimmermann telegram 
uh, for Mexico to join an alliance with Germany and then Mexico would gain territory back that the United States had taken um, during various wars in the 1800s. So Russia also, this is a major event, leaves the war in 1918, but we're going to talk more about that in the next video. Finally, the last thing for this video, we're going to take a look at uh, Woodrow Wilson, the U.S. president, and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. Um, they're the two leaders that you need to know about for World War I, and here's why. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, we hold in the United States as the guy who was originally keeping us out of World War I and then shifted to wanting to be a part of World War I. And then in the after-war period, where they're setting up the treaty that ends the war, he's one of the most important figures in designing that treaty and setting up the League of Nations, which is super important. So we learn about him now so that we can build him into the post-war uh, set of learning. But then Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany was received a lot of the blame for having started the war, for having not drawn his troops down or stopped the war with Russia when he could have. Um, so we see Woodrow Wilson rising at the end of World War I and Kaiser Wilhelm going down. And so we have those two in opposition to each other. They're like a foil in literature where one is on the rise and the other is going down. One wants to remain peaceful and one is militaristic. But that's all for this video.